a question I get asked fairly often is, Rex, what kind of base do you actually live out of? And while sure, sometimes I do live out of those bases that require that you build out five foundations and then turn around, do a flip, and build out 17 foundations to your left, often those tend not to be the bases that I really live out of. While I do use those bases sometimes when I'm playing with larger groups, if I'm playing by myself or even in a duo or a trio, there's a base design that I tend to go for time and time again. While of course making sure to plant any seeds that you find so that other players can get them, for this base you'll only need to farm up 3000 wood and 3500 stone. As a solo player, even playing vanilla, that is an incredibly realistic amount for me personally to farm up for a starter base. This base tends to last me from the beginning of the wipe until well into late game as I tend to sprinkle these bases throughout the map rather than just living in one static base. This provides me a lot of utility and benefit in that it gives me the ability to slap down this base pretty much anywhere in the map, allowing me to position myself at multiple monuments and giving myself many stash houses, safe houses, and just areas that I can respawn that will already have loot available to me. The reason I'm able to do that is obviously partially the ease at which this base is able to be built, as well as the fact that you can slap it up so quickly that it could be put up at nighttime without really any concerns that you're going to mess anything up. This means I can pretty much spawn with a rock anywhere in the map and build this incredibly simple 2x1. Finally making sure I slap that TC nicely in the corner. You'll just have to make sure you've got your doors available and lock them as soon as possible. With this design, you could really have your airlock function on any side, and it's up to you personally whether you would rather have an airlock opening on the outside or the inside to prevent people from going deeper. As I said, since the build costs and the upkeeps are so low, with the security that this base provides early game, you can really just go all out and put this base up at just about every monument and any major farm spot. Not only is it very easy to be put down, it also provides a lot of utility inside. Whether you really just want extreme maneuverability or you want to min-max that storage options, you can actually fit quite a bit in a base like this. While it may require that you move outside to build some temporary storage shelves, you can very easily do this and remove it with a hammer at barely any cost to yourself. Coming inside, then you can then build off that exterior ramp piece, upgrade that to wood or stone, and place your top shelf boxes. It can be sometimes helpful to remove the double door when you're doing this step, though ultimately it can be done even with it there. You'll want to first place this box further out, and then you'll be able to tightly place a box right here. Again, sometimes because of the double door, you then might end up getting stuck, and if you can't remove the lock, you could actually just have to unalive yourself there. Of course, at this point, you could still actually get a single box here. I do recommend using this temporary shelf to get up, and then you'll be able to slap another box just right here. This, of course, will slightly obscure access, so you might want to place it the other way, but because I don't have the door on, it's a lot easier right there. Doing the same down below here, we can place also another couple small boxes here. Still giving us plenty of access to our TC and all of our boxes, except this one, which we now have to stand up for. All right. You know what? You know what? Don't place the box like this. Just don't. Don't do it. I'm sorry I suggested it. We're going to fix that right now. It and you know what? We're not editing this out. It stays in the video. And then if you do it like this, of course, you can easily access this box with no problem. That never happened. And of course, with these all nicely placed at your door on securing things, you can now move in and out of this area, easily accessing all of your boxes with a ton of storage for us, especially for a solo. And you still have this entire room slapping up to a workbench two here and of course you could still fit that workbench three but you wouldn't have as much room for your furnaces 
but of course you could always rearrange them. And don't forget we can always fit that small box underneath that workbench, though it might have been wise to do so before placing all of our furnaces. With room in here for a couple more bags if you did not want to use the airlock as a bag room, I honestly recommend this base for just about any solo or duo starting out. If you can't really function as a solo or duo in a base with this limited storage options, it's likely that you either are, it's likely that you are hoarding some loot that you shouldn't be and not recycling it, or you simply need to upgrade quickly. Of course, if you end up at one of your monuments with an excess of loot, upgrading this base is very simple. While I do recommend adding your honeycomb to all of your sides, you're then going to destroy the temporary shelving and basically just surround every single piece with triangles. Upgrade all of these to stone, get them honeycombed out, and I'll see you on the second floor. For the second floor, we're going to start using functional honeycomb in the base. That's because once we upgrade this interior to metal, we're not really concerned about whether or not the second floor gets broken into as much as we'll move any valuable loot to that metal core. Closing everything in, you're going to want to decide where you place your jump up, I like to have it relatively close to my door here, just to make things a little easier to get through the base. And of course, close everything else in. On this side, closest to where I will build my jump up to the second floor, I like to place a respawn room. This gets me back into the action as quick as possible, and in that room, you can easily slap down a locker and a bag and a small box. That gives me enough to quickly respawn, grab my kit, and get back down and out into the action. On these sides, I will be placing double doors up here just for easy access. I'll give myself another little furnace. I'll give myself another nice little furnace room right here. And this room will become storage. While you can use wood, I personally upgrade these to stone in just about every base that I do, but there's always somebody commenting, but it could be wood. But honestly, I prefer to go to stone because if someone does decide to top down your base and there's a garage door right here, it's actually going to mean they have to go through a stone floor if they want these boxes down here, or they have to go through the garage door, where if they were more limited on boom, it would mean that they'd actually have to just go where if they were more limited on boom, they could actually decide to just take a bunch of swords and go through that piece. After all, for wood, it does only take eight salvage swords to go through any wood piece, even from the hard side, with a soft side being actually one or two salvage, one salvage sword actually, and really that's not a difficult task for a raider. When you're placing these garage doors up on your second floor or any floor for that matter, you're going to want to make sure that the roll is always going inwards towards the square. That's because if you place it going outwards, it'll be visible from the outside. At this point, I would move all of my furnaces up to the second floor, giving myself a little bit more space to work with downstairs and really kind of just taking it out of the way. I also recommend always investing in a mixing table as it simply just reduces the amount of materials needed in some cases, also gives you the ability to make teas, and simply gives you the ability to, and most importantly in my mind, gives you the ability to craft multiple things at once. As a solo, time is very precious, and being able to craft the gunpowder on the mixing table while I craft meds on myself can make my life a lot easier. Ultimately, if you're a solo or duo, this base is going to get you through a lot of wipes. While it may not be the most sturdy thing in the world, it certainly has a lot of upgrade options, and it starts from pretty much nothing. Alright, well I showed you mine, it's time to show me yours. Jump down in the comments and let me know what your favorite starter base design is, or come on over to the Discord and show me. I'd love to see some of the tricks, tips, and anything weird that you might use in your own bases. And of course, if you guys like the design, if you guys like the video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future content. I also post some other more adventurous content on my second channel, Rex More Adventures, so be sure to check that out. Until next time, enjoy your wipe and peace out.